Hi, it's Richard here from the OPA Hub website with a little bit of a talk and walk through the um, custom search example that we're looking at in today's post. So what you're looking at currently is the end result. Um, this little project, as you can see, has two attributes, the customer's name and the customer's email. And the customer's name, the required one at the top, is uh, has got the custom search code running behind it. Before we go and have a look at it, let's just see what makes it all work. So in place of a real uh, REST and sort of a REST endpoint, I'm using this wonderful website, which allows you to essentially make fake calls to a variety of endpoints. Uh, and I'm going to be using the users endpoint because there are a bunch of users in here and I can search through them. Um, I can actually make queries like this one and I should be able to make a query. Let's try again. Leanne, let's try Leanne. And I get a result set. Now, uh, the only thing to be aware of is that when you're using this kind of querying, um, it's actually going to be searching through all of these attributes. So sometimes you'll get results that you didn't expect. So if I search with the letter K, uh, you might notice that Leanne also shows up as well as Irvin Howell. It's simply because it's searching through all the different attributes and is finding K somewhere else. But anyway, it gives us a wonderful tool for making fake uh, JSON-based calls, and that's perfect for this kind of prototyping. So what else is there? Well, of course, there's some code. And in uh, usual fashion, this is incredibly verbose and overly um, commented but uh, I wanted to make it as simple as possible to follow. So the initial setup is completely normal. Um, I'm focusing only on one search control, which has a custom property in OPM, uh, which has set the name to this. Um, you can use anything you like. It's just a way of filtering the behavior so that it only operates on one of my fields, not both of them. And basically this time around, uh, you're going to be looking at search and commit. These are the two that you need to handle, plus you need to use the callback function when you have got the data ready to be shown to the end user. So let's just summarize how you're going to go about it. The text is what the user will type in. You will receive this. You will then do something with it. In our case, we're going to make a call. It's going to be a get, and we're going to call our website and make our query with the text entered by the user. When we've got this, we're going to loop through all the data received and we're going to remove any extraneous items that I don't really care about. Um, it's simply because, as you might have remembered just a second ago, the actual data that I received has a whole bunch of stuff that I'm not really interested in. The only things I'm keeping are the email address and the name. Now, the name attribute, I'm actually going to change it, going to rename it to a text element, because that's what the OPA um, search extension is expecting. So you'll see here that I'm actually creating a text attribute and basing it on the name attribute. That's because the OPA search extension expects there to be a text element. I'm deleting a bunch of other stuff, but I'm keeping the email address. I'm converting it into an array, and then I'm passing the array into the callback function. So OPA will receive my neatly formatted array, and then the user should be able to do something with it. So let's go about this. I'm going to go into the text box, and I'm going to type LEA, and I, I'm going to see whichever users correspond to this. So if I just type in, let's do LE, I get a whole bunch of different ones. Down here, you'll see the cute little uh, debug um, console that you get now. In the, even in the debugger, and you can see all my console messages going by, and you can see all of the people that were actually in the results of my query. So let's choose another one. There's a chap or a lady or a person called Chelsea. There we are. You can see that I'm just getting Chelsea back. When I click on it, you'll notice that an email address comes in here, and in case you're going to be wondering, yes, in the uh, fake data, the emails don't seem to have anything to do with the people. Um, but how does this work? Well, it's because in the commit section, I am using the value selected by the user, which of course you'll remember comes from my array over here. And because I didn't delete the email element from the uh, 
array member, I can then use it to populate a um, attribute in OPA. So the commit is great for doing post-processing because you've clicked on something, I'm going to populate other fields, whatever it is. It's really very cool. So that's it, really. Um, it's a really nice feature. Of course, there are limitations today is that it's non-authenticated. There's no mechanism in the call uh, to handle any kind of single sign-on or anything like that. I'm really just calling an endpoint and getting data, so it may not be suitable for everyone. But it's a lovely feature, and it's really, really easy to implement. It, I personally found that the documentation was a little lacking, so uh, that's why I'm here. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, don't forget to register for more from theopahub.com. And this is Richard signing off. Have a nice afternoon.